uh, well, let's start uh, first of all with uh, with uh, what 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 is this thing AI, artificial intelligence? Why is everybody is talking about it? Um, uh, in fact, it's a lot of confusion in the industry regarding the terms. And when everybody is talking about AI, in fact, in most cases they're they're talking about machine learning, some kind of machine learning things. Uh, or more specifically, deep learning algorithms that are truly uh, shined over the last like decade uh, or something like that. So th the concept of AI is indeed a quite old concept. And uh, the first program that was uh, playing checkers was invented, I guess, in the 1950s. Uh, and uh, since then, a lot of revolutionary breakthroughs have been done uh, in this area. But the, the problem is that the problem was in the last century that the, the computational power was not there yet for the AI to actually uh, show its power. And basically the computers uh, of the past were not able to provide that level of, of compute power to perform very uh, data uh, hungry uh, uh, manipulations, algorithms, predictions, etc. So that was pretty much theory at that point. Uh, but um, with the uh, with the emergence of sp specialized hardware like GPUs, powerful computers, and cloud infrastructure, uh, the old concepts they shined. Uh, they basically were reinvented in in new forms and ways. And now uh, the time has come for the true, truly transformative, uh, like some refer data driven revolution. So, um, and basically the, the, the uh, technology is peaking right now. And uh, it was primarily, uh, primarily driven by the discovery, by the major development in 12, 2012, when the uh, very famous ImageNet uh, competition took place where uh, the deep learning algorithm uh, showed extraordinary uh, predictions of the images, uh, basically being able to recognize objects on the images. Now, nobody is, uh, you know, uh, it's like common, common practice that AI can recognize images. Now, nobody is excited about this anymore because this is already very, you know, common technology when you, when you go to Facebook, uh, there is a feature that basically recognizes faces on the photo on the photos and basically can assign people to the faces and in fact this is tremendously complex task which was impossible some 20 years ago it was virtually impossible now it is a very commercial thing a very i mean it's a lot of open source software that can do that thing uh, this is the reason this tremendous progress is the reason why pharma already picking up this technology as well. And in fact, a major shift was done in generative chemistry, for example, in 2015, when the concept of uh, generative adversarial network was uh, uh, developed, uh, when there is, uh, in a very uh, general terms, of just two neural nets, the one which is trying to sort of mimic the, uh, the prediction and the other is trying to kind of prove it wrong. And they are kind of competing automatically together, learning from together, and basically uh, going step by step, step to the ideal result. And these generative uh, neural nets were very effectively uh, applied for generating chemical compounds with predicted and wanted qualities, like for example, drug-like uh, chemicals, etc. Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, discoveries have been made in the heat uh, discovery space uh, around 2018, 2019, where really like tens of companies reported on uh, different advances uh, where they managed to predict hits uh, uh, to, to some known or less known uh, biological targets. And the hits were either generated or found over the screening campaigns. And they were tested in vivo and showed efficacy and things are really uh, moving very fast in this area. Um, but uh, you probably want to ask, how is it different from good old chemo informatics or you know, statistical methods, linear regression, which was used like 50 years ago, probably. 
uh, and <clears throat> and the point is the uh, AI is not an algorithm. AI is a system, and the revolution that is not now uh, everyone everyone is now talking about is uh, not because somebody you know tried a new algorithm and applied a new software package to a certain problem, but because some companies managed to build uh, systems basically where the process is closed in a loop and this loop allows for the learning process to occur when the data is fed into the system and then experiment uh, runs, the prediction runs, then the experiment runs to prove the prediction either wrong or right and then the data about either failure or success is fed back into the system and then AI learns and this whole loop is basically automatic automatically uh, back propagated. So um, some companies did manage to build this kind of systems. And in fact, most of the big pharma companies are now implementing programs uh, internally or partnering with companies like Postera, for example, uh, to basically probe the ground in this uh, groundbreaking technology. As of now, AI is applied in virtually every step of the drug discovery process. Here is a tree, I have written a tree uh, where you can see that it basically starts with finding materials, consumables, like uh, and uh, doing some chemical synthesis prediction. And this is was the topic of uh, some of the talks today. And then data mining from literature, building uh, knowledge graphs, basically building ontologies uh, of diseases and uh, biological models of cells, etc. Then assisting in screening programs, finding hits, uh, lead optimization, and etc. Uh, needless to say, the ex lab experiment is, is, of course, has to be conducted. Still, AI is not at that level that all the prediction can be run all the way to clinical candidate. No, it's not the case yet. But now already a lot of time, energy, and cost can be saved by applying these uh, technologies. So let's just briefly go through some examples. Let's start with a uh, with very obvious thing. Uh, there, are, there are a number of computational uh, uh, marketplaces right now which allow a very, very powerful search to be run on reagents to find, let's say, antibodies or molecules or uh, different uh, chem other chemicals or biological uh, substances and basically uh, create uh, the experiment in a very powerful way. Uh, it's not like searching, very usual search. It's not like, you know, going to a catalog and basically trying uh, to find something on the catalog, but it, it is where the, um, you know, the, the AI system is learning uh, previous searches and basically every search, every next search is becoming a little bit more accurate than before. That's the power of this uh, technology. And for example, there is the bench side uh, um, um, company which has, uh, has received funding from Google to develop the uh, biological search system is tremendously powerful. And uh, also there is the chemical uh, synthesis uh, planning spaces is now uh, booming with uh, AI technologies. There is some uh, programs like, for example, Cynthia, which was acquired by Merck some time ago. Uh, there was a very well-known program, Chematica at that time. Uh, and the manifold, of course, which uh, Aaron and Alpha presented today, uh, and another example, and IBM Ericsson for chemistry, which is an open source uh, synthesis prediction program. So, I mean, it's kind of a lot of them right now on the market, and they're very powerful, uh, as you have seen in the presentation before. Uh, but the next step in this, pro uh, remember, I, I told you that the AI is not, uh, you know, is not a program, AI is a system, that's the power, that's where the industry is heading. And so the next step is to build in the system which would uh, do all the, all the steps uh, automatically without any human intervention or with minimal human intervention. Where for example, uh, the process is done the way that uh, the, the uh, 
the target compound basically is uh, predicted by the algorithm, then the synthesis uh, predicted uh, for that compound and that synthesis is basically the, the roads are sent into a certain format to the uh, virtual laboratory uh, where robots basically mix components and do some uh, chemistry and, and report results like NMR or some measurements uh, directly to the laboratory. This whole process is not a theory, it's not a sci-fi, it's actually a, a thing that is already existing and some companies do that and all even offering commercial uh, infrastructures for running virtual experiments from your home. You can uh, program the experiments from your home. Now they have a lot of limitations uh, at this moment, but again, the progress is, is very, uh, is very progress quickly progressing. So for example, this system was uh, developed at MIT in collaboration with uh, Bristol Myers Cleave and other companies. And there is another, uh, another um, example is Robert RxN by IBM, which is also the, the cloud-based laboratory where you can uh, run chemical experiments. Uh, another area which is very par uh, a very powerful use case for the AI application is biological target discovery and validation. Essentially, this is where the big data uh, comes to play. Um, you see, uh, there are millions of uh, reports, uh, research papers that are published basically on a yearly basis, and no one chemist can or biologist can track everything. And even if you try to search uh, using your usual browser, uh, you know, Google search or anything like that, uh, you're not going to cover a lot of uh, results because, you know, the search is not perfect and, uh, and you can't go through hundreds of suggestions that the search would, uh, would suggest you. But uh, the AI system, the systems, they now can uh, basically parse the internet and uh, read the data through the natural language processing algorithms. And they can recognize concepts like, for example, a protein, the AI can extract data from the paper and it can uh, and understand that this one term, it means the drug, or that one term means a chemical, and that one other term means a biological you know, target or, or pathway, et cetera. So the AI does it extremely fast, like on millisecond basis, and then uh, the algorithms can connect different concepts into so-called ontologies. Ontologies essentially graphs of knowledge where different entities are connected. Let's say you have a uh, you have uh, a, a one thousand papers on you know a specific cancer type. Then the AI can basically go through the papers and analyze the the information they, uh, and build. Uh, the, the, the model of the, uh, that specific cancer type uh, by uh, extracting knowledge, experimental knowledge and connecting the dots, essentially building the ontology of that cancer type. And then based on that, it can suggest certain targets uh, which might be relevant for, uh, for, for curing that specific uh, cancer type. And then, the, uh, of course, that needs a validation. And this is where experimental uh, testing has to occur in the lab and uh, results are either uh, confirmed or, you know, or, de or, um, or declined. And, and again, the, the system is learning and it's improving on itself. The next logical step, and this is also a very powerful uh, topic for and use case for the application is heat discovery. Essentially, there are several strategies for heat discovery, one being uh, a, a docking like uh, experiments where essentially there is a known structure of the biological target, uh, which might have been predicted on the previous step, by the way. And uh, another, another, uh, and, and, and the AI is trying to optimize the docking functions or somehow fit, uh, create molecule from scratch, for example, and fit it into certain constraints of parameters that are needed for that specific uh, biological target. Another major strategy is generative chemistry, where essentially um, uh, the molecules are imagined, so to speak, uh, and they imagine in a way that they are already uh, possessing all the specific parameters 
like drug likeness, specific molecular parameters, etc. And then all that we need to do is just test and see if the prediction is right or wrong. And believe me, uh, from analyzing a lot of uh, literature, um, they are getting really, really uh, powerful at that. So um, next, the preclinical research, uh, what follows uh, the, uh, the, the study of successful heat discovery and lead optimization in the preclinical research and AI is shining here as well. There are a number of companies who offer already today the computational uh, virtual, um, like uh, remote labs where you can basically set up the experimentation. For example, uh, a massive assay uh, screening uh, experiment where you basically send, um, send the parameters, uh, you, you basically set up the experiment and the, the lab uh, with the partner is, is, is running the experiment report and results and the AI can uh, kind of optimize the conditions of that experiment. Uh, based on real-time observations. And, and, and again, it's learning and it's getting better with each major program, with each major iteration. And finally, uh, as I said again and again, uh, the AI is not, a, is not a program. AI is not a Python uh, library, which you can import into your you know, software package. AI is a system. And the system is something that gets data, does something to it, process results, and gets meaningful output into the world. That's the AI system. That's where real, real power of AI lies. And there are a number of companies who actually managed to build this kind of uh, systems where essentially they start with literature search and they end up with a preclinical drug candidate, uh, which, is, which needs to be uh, then uh, tested in vivo, in vitro, in vivo, and and then uh, basically process selected for further clinical trial uh, programs, etc. Uh, there's just a couple of uh, companies that are already doing that, like in Silicon Medicine, Hilx, uh, and and others that are claiming that they created the whole system which covers the whole spectrum of of um, uh, drug discovery. But uh, they have uh, also some, uh, some issues at the moment. And of course, the progress is uh, still ongoing and a lot of research needs to be done until we can truly do pharmaceutical uh, discovery uh, in, in silicon. 